Hello friends, welcome to the awareness session on engineering drawing for engineering service exam aspirants. I am Sunil Khabia, faculty engineering drawing at MADG. With me in the panel is my colleague and expert of engineering drawing, Heather sir and Anirudh sir. As you all know that from engineering services exam 2017, UPSC has implemented the revised scheme and syllabus of engineering services examination. In the revised scheme, ESC prelims has two objective papers. Paper 1 is general studies and engineering aptitude of 200 marks and paper 2 is discipline specific of 300 marks. The syllabus of general studies and engineering aptitude is divided into 10 parts. Part 4 is general principles of design, drawing and importance of safety. Today we will be discussing on drawing here in the panel. About level of questions, UPSC has clearly mentioned that the paper in general studies and engineering aptitude will include knowledge of relevant topics as may be expected from an engineering graduate without a special study. Anirud sir, will you please elaborate the syllabus of engineering drawing for engineering service exam aspirant? If we look at the syllabus of engineering drawing from which is taught in the universities across India, it is very vast. Engineering drawing is a big subject. If we look at it from the ESC prelims point of view, the paper will be of objective MCQ type. The made easy team which comprises of expert faculties and the persons from research and development team of the made easy, we have demarcated and listed the important topics which can be asked in the prelims paper, in an objective paper. So the breakdown of these topics is as follows. First of all, we will study scales, then we will come on to conic sections, then we will study special curves, then theory of projections, then based on theory of projections, we will study projection of points, projection of lines, projection of planes, projection of solids, and after that we will come on to section of solids, development of surfaces, and isometric projection. These are the topics that we have to study. Now coming on to the topic of which topics we have to leave, so we can skip topics like intersection of solids, oblique projections, perspective projections and AutoCAD. In ESE 2017, how many questions were asked from engineering drawing and from which topics and in ESE 2018, how many questions were asked from engineering drawing and from which topic? In uh, 2017, total number of 9 questions were asked in 2017 and these questions cover the topic. Uh, uh, the first question asked from conic section and the question was based on rectangular hyperbola. Then two questions asked from uh, special curves. One question based on uh, hypocycloid and the second question based on a spiral. Then we move on. One question was asked from projection of line. And that question was very easy that checks the basic knowledge of the student. Then we move further. One question was from uh, uh, projection of solids. And in that solid, the, in that question, the question was based on a square pyramid. That is really conceptual question and it checks the somewhat knowledge of mechanics also. When we move further, two questions, three questions actually were asked from development of surfaces. One was based on cylinder and two was based on cone. And one question asked from... Uh, section of solid and that was really one of my favorite question and it checks the basic and conceptual knowledge of section of solid if a student have studied section of solid properly then only he is able to answer the question these were the questions asked in 2017 but in 2018 only single question was asked from engineering drawing that question is was very important because it checks the knowledge of section of solid as well as the knowledge of orthographic projection. I uh, would ask to, to like Anirud sir, uh, from the topic scales, uh, what contents you will be covering and up to what depth? See in today's world, 
where computers are used for everything, the importance of topic of scales remains basically to determine by how much amount an object should be reduced or how much amount it should be enlarged uh, rather than we should say by what factor an object should be reduced or enlarged so that we can represent it on the drawing sheet. Now that is the representative fraction that we are talking about. So we have to study about representative fraction. Then we have to study what are the different types of scales. So basically there are five types of scales. So we have to study about them. We have to study their properties and then we have to study their uses uh, as in which type of scale is used for which use. Then plane scale and diagonal scale we have to study in greater detail and we have to solve some numericals on them also. So this is the complete coverage of scales that we will be discussing in the class. In the chapter uh, orthographic projection uh, which is the chapter on which we build the whole engineering, engineering drawing, drawing. Uh, as far as our students are concerned and in the chapter projection of points uh, what you will be covering from engineering service exam point of view uh, actually as we all know that uh, orthographic projection is the heart of engineering drawing and here we will uh, study about how the object is projected on a picture plane. Different type of planes we will explain here, different type of planes are there, what is horizontal plane, vertical plane and what type of auxiliary planes are there. And coming topics that is points, line, plane, solid, section and isometric projection, the basics has been developed in orthographic projection. And as we are talking about projection of points, in projection of point, we will study, we will observe the position of point in different, different quadrants how its projections are made if the point has some distance from horizontal plane and some distance from vertical plane and if the point is resting either on hp either on vp then how its projections are made and here in projection of points we also introduce auxiliary plane methods yes. these were the topic that we have to yeah. cover anirudh sir next question i would like to ask you in the chapter projection of straight line what you will be covering in the classroom First of all, we will create the basic understanding of the topic and uh, discuss the concepts of true length, apparent length, true inclinations and apparent inclinations. Then we will come on to the various cases of lines in which we will see how the line is placed with respect to the reference planes. Line may be either parallel to both the reference planes, line may be parallel to one of the plane and perpendicular to the other, line may be parallel to one of the reference plane and inclined to the other reference plane and finally line may be inclined to both the reference planes. Then after covering all these topics we will come on to the concept of traces. That concept is very important. Will you cover the concept of true length of line in class? Yes definitely. Yes true length will also be covered. And will you please throw some light uh, on question asked in e EAC 2017 from straight lines? Yes, uh, the concept of true length as uh, Khabir sir has raised, the, co uh, the question that was asked in the ESE 2017 that was based on the true length of the line concept. Uh, the question was something like this, that a line is given and it is parallel to HP and inclined to vertical plane. So it was asked that where we will find the true length of the line. So, that was the question. yes. So it checks the concept of true length, the in top view we will get the true length of the line. Either sir, next chapter that comes in the sequence is projection of planes. Yeah. Uh, what uh, we will be delivering to the student in chapter projection of planes? In projection of plane, the picture is slightly changed. As we have seen projection of points, we will study the position of point in different, different quadrants. But in projection of plane, we will study the projection only in first quadrant. And we will see how the projection are made if plane is inclined or parallel or inclined to both the plane. So how their projections are made on picture plane. Sometimes the question may be asked uh, if a reduced shape are seen in the top view then the surface of the plane is inclined to which plane. So basically these are the topics that we have to study in this in this uh, chapter. And one more thing uh, 
the most important is traces also. Traces is an, is an important par part in projection of plane because traces we will use in section of solid also. These are the topics that we are covering in this heading. So, how do you plan the sub contents of the chapter projection of solid from engineering service exam point of view? First of all, we will study elementary solids such as regular polyhedra, prisms, pyramids, cones, cylinders and so on. Then we will study the projection of solids in different conditions such as when the axis is parallel to both the planes, when axis is parallel to one plane and perpendicular to the other and also when axis is parallel to one plane and inclined to the other. We will not, going, we will not be going to study uh, the case in which axis is inclined to both the planes that is from conventional point of view so this paper is objective so we can leave that part now from projection of solids one question was asked in EAC 2017 that was very good question in that a square pyramid was given and it was suspended from one of the points on its base now it was asked that the imaginary line that was joining the point of suspension and the center of gravity will it be uh, will that line will be 30 degree to the vertical 45 degree to the vertical 60 degree to the vertical or that line will be exactly vertical so that line which is joining the point of suspension and the center of gravity that line will be always vertical, always vertical. Mm. thank you so that covered the concept of mechanics also mm. yeah yeah sure yeah. it uh, was basically yeah. Mechanics, mechanics and the knowledge of drawing that was required is one should understand the meaning of the word square pyramid. Square pyramid, yes, definitely. Uh, uh, that is based on the concept of mechanics that moments, some of moments should always be zero. Hmm. When a body is in equilibrium, yes, then the net moment on it is zero. zero. What topics uh, you plan to cover under the head sections of solids? Uh, section of solids uh, is really one of the important topic of engineering drawing. In section of solids, actually we have already seen, uh, we have already studied about the solids. In section of solid, we will observe the different position of section plane when it is cutting the solid. For example, if section plane is parallel to one plane and perpendicular to another, if section plane is inclined to one plane and perpendicular to another, other, then how its uh, sectional views are obtained. And if sectional plane, for example, is inclined to vertical plane or vertical wall, then the its uh, sectional view will seen on the front view or on the auxiliary plane. The most important thing is here in this topic, we have to draw, we have to observe about the true shape of the section. And when section plane is inclined to one plane, then its true shape will be seen on auxiliary plane. So such type of topics are very important. We will cover also traces. Sometimes it will ask about traces also. Yes, true shape is the favorite topic of yes, paper yes. setters. Yes. In every paper, their focus is on true shape. Even in line, they were talking about the true length of true length line. of line. Uh, up till now, in EAC exams, there were questions asked from sections of solid. Please elaborate. Please discuss those questions with our students. Uh, in 2017, the question was asked. Actually, that question was one of my favorite question mm -hmm. because it checked the basic conceptual knowledge of the student and the question was like that if I am having a pentagonal prism and it is resting on one of its rectangular face on the horizontal plane we are having a tool also it is resting on one of its rectangular face uh, on the horizontal plane so it is cut by some section plane in such a way that the true shape will have maximum number of edges so the question was asked how many number of edges were there and it will definitely check the student only only answer who has a good sound knowledge of section plane. The answer will be like that if the section plane will cut this solid in such a way, then we have the maximum number of edges and the answer was uh, uh, seven number of edges were there. And one more thing sir, I remember in 2018, a very good question was asked and that checked the basic knowledge of section as well as orthographic projection. Uh, can you sir uh, put some light on that question? Yes, students, uh, in 2018, the question asked from section of solid, more correctly I should say the question asked from engineering drawing but because it involved the knowledge of orthographic projection, projection of solid as well as section of solid, 
was application oriented question. In that question, they gave us plan of a room and the sectional view of the wall, the first footing and the lowest footing. It, and the paper setter wanted to know what will be the volume of rubble masonry required for first footing. In real life also this type of situation is, takes place. The civil engineer in field has to calculate the volume of concrete required. Now, to solve that question by looking at the sectional plan and the section view of wall, rubble, masonry and lower lowest foundation, you should be able to visualize it in three dimension. And once you are able to visualize it, then finding out the volume of rubble masonry required for first footing becomes very easy. It is simply cross sectional area multiplied by perimeter of the centroid of cross sectional area. Anirudh sir, the next chapter in natural sequence is development of surfaces. Please discuss with our students the contents that you will be covering in the chapter development of surfaces. In development of surfaces, basically we study what type of cutout we have to make in a flat sheet so that the required solid can be generated. For that we have to study four different methods. One is parallel line method, other is uh, the second one is radial line method, third method is approximate method and then fourth is triangulation method. All these methods we have to study. Uh, so this is the uh, portion that we will be covering in development of surfaces. Anirudh sir, I am recalling that in ESE 2017, three questions were asked from development of surfaces. Will you please discuss those questions with our students? Yes, you are correct Khavya sir. Uh, the three questions were asked in the development of surfaces and all the three were very easy questions. Uh, let me explain these questions one by one. So first question was, uh, if a cone is there and if we wound a thread around a cone in such a way that thread is starting from a point and we are coming back to the same point, we are asked what will be the shortest length of the thread mm -hmm. that can be wound. So this requires the development. Simply what we have to do that we will develop the surface of this cone and after developing the surface, suppose we have wound around it from point 1, from point 1 we have wound the thread again coming to the point 1. It simply means that if we develop this surface, what we will get the shortest path will be a straight line joining point 1 and point 1. This was the one question. Uh, so Sir. the answer was it is the largest chord, chord of yes. the developed uh, sector. sector. Uh, the second question was that the development of a cone is given and the development of cone is given as semicircle. So, uh, question was uh, like that if semicircle is the development of a cone then there were three four options given that slant height of the cone is equal to the radius of the base of the cone, slant height is equal to the diameter, slant height is less than the diameter or none of these. So, for this question we require the elementary formula for this angle. So, this angle theta is equal to 360 degree into small r that is radius of the base of the cone divided by slant height. So, theta is equal to 360 degree r by h. So, if we put this angle, this angle for semicircle will be 180 degree. So, 180 degree equals to 360 degree r by h, we will get the relation that slant height is equal to the diameter of the cone. Yes. So, this was also very, very, very easy, very easy question. Very easy question. Then the but the only thing is that a student should study up till the development. Yes, yes, yes. They should not leave the classes in between. Now, 
coming on to the third question. The third question, uh, there were four options given that development of a cone is triangle and uh, other such options. Uh, the correct option was the development of a cylinder is a rectangle. So, if we look at a rectangle, this is the rectangle and if we fold it, what we will get? We will get a cylinder. So, correct option was the development of cylinder is rectangle. So, these are the Thank you, sir. Very well explained. Uh, Heather, you. sir, uh, I am coming to you. After development, the next chapter is isometric, isometric projection. Uh, how do you plan to teach it to the uh, students? Isometric projection is a very vast topic, but according to the need of engineering service examination, what we have to cover? Actually, here we required only some basic knowledge of isometric projection. Isometric is a part of axonometric projection and here three types of uh, axonometric projection that is isometric, diametric and trimetric projection. We have to see what is the relation between diametric, trimetric and isometric projection. What are isometric axis? What is isometric scale? What is RF of isometric scale? How to obtain the isometric length? These topics should be covered in isometric projection according to me. Mm. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And you, sir, uh, in a special course, what topics a student should study? In special curves, there are various type of special curves that you have to study. Basically, we divide all these special curves in the family of three curves. So, first one is family of cycloidal curves, second is family of involute curves and third is the family of spiral curves. So, all these type of curves we have to study in the class. From special curves, questions were also asked in EAC 2007. Yes, exactly. Two, two questions, two were, two were, questions asked. were asked. Two questions were asked, one from a spiral and one was from hypocycline. So, will you please discuss those questions with our students? See, hypocycloid is, uh, that comes in the family of cycloidal curves and the question was that if uh, a circle is moving inside another circle of uh, diameter twice the diameter of the inside circle that is circling, uh, uh, generating circle. So, the question was that if a point is placed on the generating circle, which type of curve that point will follow? So, it will exactly make two rounds and the curve generated will be a straight line. Straight. What was the second question? Second question was like if a pendulum is swinging, okay, if a pendulum is swinging and a point is moving along a pendulum, which type of curve will be generated? So, we have already seen uh, when a line is rotating about a point and a uh, generating point is also moving along the line then we get a spiral so answer to this question was spiral yes. spiral thank okay. you thank you anil sir heather sir uh, the next topic is conic section so what you plan to teach in conic section in conic section we have to observe how to cut the conic section to get different conic section like ellipse parabola, hyperbola, circle or triangle and we have to also study what is the relation between the angles of section plane and axis of the cone to get different conic section. These were the very important topic and we have to also discuss about some applications of ellipse, parabola and hyperbola that may be asked in the exam. Yes, sir. Yes. And one question, sir, was asked in EAC 2017 yes, 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 from... Yes. Rectangular hyperbola, Rectangular hyperbola. Which, which is a conic section. So, conic will you section. please please discuss yeah. that question with our yeah, students? Yeah, definitely. The question was like that. If I am having a cone and this cone is resting on the HP and section plane is parallel to vertical plane. If section plane is parallel to vertical plane and it will cut the cone like this in such a way. Then we have rectangular hyperbola if the apex angle is 90 degree. That was the question has been asked in the exam. That was very good question. Thank you, sir. Uh, students, uh, this was the detailed discussion of subtopics uh, that will be covered by made easy experts in the classroom. Uh, now, uh, let us come to other questions. Anirudh, sir, uh, I would like you uh, to recommend some learning resources to our students. The best learning resource for student is the Made Easy Class Notes. If student has attended the class religiously 
uh, he might he will be having a very good notes of a subject so whenever doubt arises he can always refer to his class notes also after completing the class notes stu uh, students should go for the theory book of made easy in which the questions are framed the questions are uh, that are framed that are given in the theory book that are limited number of questions but they are covering the entire portion now after that student want to practice the questions he want to practice more questions to gain more confidence so after th uh, theory book is completed for practice of, of questions we have provided also the workbook yes in workbook an extensive number of problems is given and student can practice all these questions and those questions are most likely to appear or in some other form they are most likely to appear in the ec examination so that uh, solving of workbook is also very important beyond that i won't i will not recommend any other book uh, because there is limited time for the students they cannot go for indefinite studying for one and subject they have to only. study relevant topics yes. yes they have to study relevant topics so we have already given all the relevant topics questions everything uh, to the students so they should follow these sources only what is the importance of made easy test series uh, in the preparation of student in the selection of a student how it gives a student psychological advantage uh, please Uh, medici test series is very me medici test test series is very beneficial for the student because it, it is the best way of self judgment and a student will aware about the environment of the exam a student can compare himself from the topper or top rankers of the test series that where he will stand and one more thing that a student can judge in how much time he is solving the question so the test series is really very beneficial for him yes i must say if i aspirants is seriously about the exam then definitely has to join the test series definitely yes this is age of computers no age even you yeah, can yeah, give yeah. student information how much time the topper required yes, for solving yes, that yes, question yes, and how much yes, time yes extensive analysis is given great computerization yes, yes. great yeah. computer yeah. great yeah, analysis like is given so he can judge his exact performance in relative to the average student as well as to the as well as to the uh, toppers. toppers yes yes uh, anirudh sir uh, students have doubts and they want that their doubts should be cleared what is your plan that doubt of each and every student gets cleared and the student remains satisfied see whenever we are studying a new thing it is natural that some doubts will arise when the doubts are arising in the class student can ask the teacher in the class itself or student can approach when the class is completed but main problem arises when the class is completed teacher has gone and now if a student is revising the subject and at that time the doubt is coming he cannot directly interact with the teacher so for that Made Easy has provided a very good platform, Facebook Plus Plus. Made Easy Facebook Made Plus Plus. Made Easy Facebook Plus Plus. On that platform, student can log in and he can post his questions directly on that platform. And within twenty four hours, we always try that uh, the doubt is cleared within the twenty four hours. For that, student can either type the question or he can write the question on the paper and uh, click the damage. image and upload it. So. Uh, the answer will be given in the format of either uh, same thing either uh, faculty will provide the image or faculty can also upload the video clarifying the doubt of the student so whenever the uh, student is having doubt within 24 hours that doubt can be cleared that made is he has assured yeah that is the wonderful platform for wonderful students yes. this is really very good so sir uh, as we have already discussed the content syllabus of the topic uh, what we are covering in the classroom and what student have to study at the last i just want to ask one question what will be the easiest way by an average student can easily grasp the power of engineering drawing according to you as most experienced as far as engineering drawing is concerned it is an aptitude based subject there are some students who can imagine very easily just by reading from book 
there are students with average imagination, average visualization and for them the learning tool that I will be showing will be very useful. This is the quadrant which students can make. It is made from simple file board, thick one. This is the vertical plane and this is the horizontal plane. And suppose you are studying, you suppose you are trying to visualize the questions on projection of points, then you can make this type of arrangement, pearl fitted on a needle. The pearl will indicate the, the center of pearl will indicate the point, and you can position the point on the quadrant as per instructions given in the question. When you want to find out front view of the point in 3D, you simply draw a projector from the point perpendicular to vertical reference plane and point at which this projector intersects the vertical reference plane is front view of the point. Very good. Visualization of points is easy, but as we proceed, in straight lines visualization becomes li little difficult. In a straight line you can make a simple arrangement like this. This is refill and on the two ends of the refill I have fitted two needles with pearl. Suppose in a straight line question, it is said that a straight line is parallel to VP and inclined to HP at 30 degree. Draw its projection. So you simply fit it as per the instructions given in the question. And when you want the front view of this straight line, you use the torch of your mobile phone to take the projection and the shadow at least it is 95 percent accurate front view and when you want the top view of this straight line either you look at it from top and get a feel of the top view or you can Throw take the torch of your smartphone at the top and observe the shadow, rays of light from the torch should be perpendicular to horizontal plane and the reduced shadow gives us an idea of the top view. Similarly, uh, to develop the visualization of solids, you can prepare models like this. This is a pentagonal prism. Suppose it, in a question it is said that a pentagonal prism is having its base in HP with one edge of base near the VP parallel to VP. Draw its front view and top view. The first step is you fit the model on the quadrant as per instructions given in the question. Since these are hollow models, they can be very easily fitted. I have fitted the pentagonal prism with one edge of base near VP parallel to VP. And now, if you want to visualize the front view of this pentagonal prism, you simply look at it from front and you get an idea of the front view. And if you want to know how will be the top view of this pentagonal prism, you simply look at the model from the top and you get an idea of top view of the solid. Especially students with average imagination power will be benefited by these learning tools and these are 
just ladders for developing imagination. Once your imagination is developed, then there is no you need. will not require no these tools. Automatically, the ideas will come in your brain. Thank you, sir. This is a really very good tool and uh, definitely a student will uh, take advantage of, from such type of tools. Thank these you, tools, sir. Thank these you. models can also be used for development. development. Yes, 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 yes. In fact, while explaining, you yes, used yes, them yes. for the development. Yes, yes. Uh, my dear students, I hope you found this awareness session on engineering drawing useful. I, Sunil Khabia, and my learned colleagues, Anirudh sir and Heather sir, wish you best of luck. Best very best of luck.